If you're anything like me, you are super excited about Disney Parks opening the brand new Galaxy's Edge section at Disneyland and also in Disney World. Well, D23 and OC Register and Disney Parks blog just released a swath of new information for us to dive through. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano and I'm here with a very special, important news break of information regarding Galaxy's Edge. I am, I just, wow. This is, this is a lot of info. D23, uh, it is now like 10 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night when this came out. Um, on February 27th, I should mention it. And D23 just dropped a bunch of info about Galaxy's Edge on their website. So many pictures, so much information about the souvenirs, the toys, the food. Oh my goodness. All right, the, the best thing we can do is kind of take a look here and uh, let's just look at the website. Okay, so let's start up at the top of the page. This is written by Zach Johnson, and all the photos here are from D23 or from the OC Register, uh, and the credits will be listed on there, as well as links below to all of these articles. So, starting off, says, Adventures Abound in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge coming this summer to Disneyland Resort and this fall to Walt Disney World Resort, encompassing 14 acres in each park. The immersive land builds off decades of collaboration. Okay, get to the good stuff. Come on, the good stuff. Uh, so, let's just, let's just zip down here a smidge. It says there are three carefully designed entrance points to Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland, allowing guests to enter via Critter Country, Fantasyland, or Frontierland, and two entrance points at Disney's Hollywood Studios. That's kind of interesting. Disney World only has two, Disneyland's going to have three. Very cool. Short and closed passageways between the lands are designed to compress and then expand the views of visitors. That's really cool. That's the Disney magic right there. Uh, this is like a movie fading out and then back in to ensure that the first sight of Galaxy's Edge is a carefully framed cinematic view. Oh, of course, it's gonna be so beautiful. Uh, as, as previously announced, John Williams is gonna be doing the score, so of course we've known that for a little bit. So we do know that there's gonna be two attractions in here. There's going to be the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, uh, and there's also gonna be, was it Rise of the Resistance? So those are, there's really, it's crazy there's gonna be a whole huge land, but with only two main attractions. Doesn't sound like much, but as they have elaborated on the different shops and restaurants and the experience you can get, it's gonna. there's still gonna be plenty to do, but I think you're gonna need to remember to bring your wallet. So just looking at the website here, it does give a little blurb about Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. It says, uh, Smuggler's Run is a level of guest participation in a ride that we have not done, that we haven't done, says Robin Reardon, portfolio executive producer of Walt Disney Imagineering. When you step into that cockpit as the only flight crew, the only Millennium Falcon for that day that's going on that mission, that's a pretty amazing leap in terms of storytelling from the very beginning. And the payoff and participatory nature of the experience are so far unparalleled. So what she says, the story, the feeling that you're supposed to have when you ride Smuggler's Run is that you're the only crew riding, using the Millennium Falcon that you're not supposed to feel like, oh, I'm in line with 200 other people or 2,000 other people. It's supposed to feel a very like a very special, unique experience between you and your crew. This is the payoff and the participatory nature of the experience are so far unparalleled. That's a bold statement. It's a very bold statement. Uh, let's kind of look at some of these pictures they provided here. Uh, this one says Star Wars Galaxy's Edge will open summer 19 at Disney Park in Anaheim and fall 2019 at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. Okay. Uh, famous chess room. There's the hollow chess. Dejaric is what we call it. Um, oh, wait. Guests inside the Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. So inside the queue, we're going to be able to see all this cool stuff. That's really exciting. Uh, spanning 14 acres. I think we mentioned that earlier. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge will be the largest single-themed land expansion ever. Transporting guests to Black Spire Outpost, Outpost, a village on the planet of Batu. That is a really cool concept image. I actually really like that. I don't think I've seen that one yet. Uh, next up, this one I've seen. This is like the first one they showed us. The lands will have two signature attractions, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run and Rise of the Resistance. This is an actual picture at Disneyland, if I'm not mistaken. Docking Bay 7, Food and Cargo, is a designated location for traveling food shuttles. So there's our first official name of an eatery. It's going to be called Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo. This is our first real big amount of little bit of information here. 
Okay, Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities will feature rare items from across the galaxy for sale, including holocrons, ancient Jedi and Sith artifacts, lightsabers, and more. This is huge. So Doc Ondar. Doc Ondar is this character who's going to be, I think he's the cover of the first Galaxy's Edge comic book that's going to come out in April. Uh, but he's also an animatronic, one of three important animatronics that all the press people got to see this week. Um, they got to see Rex, DJ Rex, who's going to be providing entertainment and spinning music. So it's Rex. It's actually, I've got him here. It's Rex from Star Tours, the original Star Tours. I knocked something over so it's an officially a Dano Channel video. But it's Rex from Star Tours. It's going to be him as a DJ, DJing music. Okay, that's one. We have Doc Ondar who's going to be, we're going to get a story about him. We're going to learn more about Doc Ondar. So I don't know a whole lot other than he's an Athorian, some kind of traitor, deals in rare artifacts, and you'll be able to haggle with him. Uh, apparently, according to the OC Register, they it said they said that it had two moods. It's either happy or it's kind of upset. And I don't know how this works. They haven't confirmed this yet. But it's supposed to affect the price you pay on these items. Uh, one thing they've mentioned with a lot of these items is... Galaxy's Edge, you're not going to be able to go buy like a Galaxy's Edge t-shirt that just shows like Galaxy's Edge branding like you would at any other land in Disneyland. It's going to be stuff that's specific, and we'll get into this in just a little bit as we go through the image, but it's supposed to make you feel like you really are on another planet. This is huge. All right, so the fact that there's Jedi and Sith artifacts is really cool. We'll see those in just a little bit, as well as the lightsabers. All right, next one shows the Droid Depot. Guests will be able to build their own personal droids. This excites me. From what I've heard on this is that the droids will be interactive to the land. So if you buy a droid and you put it in him, what the other articles are saying, that if you program or, or whatever you want to call it, to be afraid of stormtroopers, that when you're walking around the land and you've got your little droid, he will react to stormtroopers and be like, ah, I'm scared or whatever, however a droid would represent that. So that's really interesting, but this shop looks really cool. I like seeing R5-D4, there's R2, there's BB-8 in the background, there's a mom and a kid kind of like pointing, and it looks like there's some kind of kiosk back here where you can put your droid together. And judging on this artwork, they look to be about this big. I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't know what you want to call that, like eight inches maybe? Eight or nine inches tall? Like a good size droid. So my guess is that they're going to be Somewhere between $50 and $100. I would think at least $49.99. At least. More realistically leaning towards like $69 or $79. If they're interactive and they're that cool and it's Disney, I would expect, I think a safe range is to say between $50 and $100. It won't be more than $100 because that's insane. It's supposed to be like something that you can, everyone can get hopefully. But I think $50 is probably going to be around where it is. Unless... The features aren't really all there, and it's just like you build a droid, and it kind of like that's all it does is react to stormtroopers. Then maybe 30 to 50 in that range, but again, we won't know for a little while. All right, next up says the largest settlement on Batu Black Spire Outpost is an infamous stop for traders, adventurers, smugglers traveling around the outer rim and wild space. And we've got a little girl dragging her dad over towards it. Now, if you look closely, there are stormtroopers just kind of positioned around. People joking around with their friends. It, it's not nearly as crowded in this picture as it's probably going to be on opening day. Um, let's see here. Next, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run will let guests walk the hallways and experience other memorable areas of the fastest ship in the galaxy. Of course, there's a nice picture of them going into hyperspace. He's punching it. This is really cool. Just like seeing all this looks amazing. I'm so excited to go do this. That might actually... No, that's an artist rendering. I was going to say, that might be a real picture. This next one is a picture of the model, which we've seen for a little while, just going over the three entrances. Um, again, mentioning John Williams created the themes. Uh, another thing, Black Spire Outpost is closely associated with the geologic formations that surround it. So there's probably a, one there with a Black Spire. Oh, here we go. Olga's Cantina. Now, this we've seen before. This is not new artwork. Olga's Cantina is a local watering hole to unwind, conduct business, and maybe even encounter a friend or foe. And later, we're going to get to the different drinks and food that are available as well. All right, next up, Disney Imagineers work closely with Lucasfilm LTD, as well as directors J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson, to shape Black Spire, Black Spire Outpost. Cool. Very cool. Now, if you guys watch Resistance, I don't know if you noticed, but on this picture right around here where I'm circling my mouse, that was used as a background picture of Yeager's family. Uh, so, if, again, Yeager is this character. I just have toys everywhere. 
because this is my channel, this character, Yeager, he's looking at his family who's missing because of the First Order, and in the background, if you look closely, is this section of Batu. And they, it didn't really say anything, but it's just a weird coincidence. All right, next up, Ronto Roasters. This is number two, official name number two. Ronto Roasters will feature a savory meat spit roasted over a former pod racer engine. So we've seen this picture. We knew it was going to be a pod racer engine that was what the grill was surrounded, but we got the name today, Ronto Roasters. Now, Rontos were originally added uh, in 1997 when they did the uh, special edition of Star Wars A New Hope. They added some scenes to the Moss Eisley little speed through area and Ron Jawa's writing Rontos was one of them so it's kind of cool they brought that back and yeah it's very Star Wars of them uh, it says traverse the corridors of the Star Destroyer on Star Wars Rise of the Resistance and join an epic battle between the First Order and the Resistance okay Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is one of the most advanced immersive experiences ever undertaken by the Walt Disney Imagineering and it looks like it if they built two AT-ATs or AT-ATs inside of this giant hangar that's that looks amazing uh, face off with Kylo Ren. Okay, we've seen that. This is huge. At Savi's workshop, hand-built lightsabers, guests will have the opportunity to customize and craft their own lightsabers. Now, you know I love this because I'm a huge fan of the Disneyland Build Your Own Lightsaber toys. This looks like it might be a little bit more in-depth. I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that they scrap the toy, the plastic ones, and we go full metal. Even if it costs more, even if it costs way more, that's what I want. That's what, this is, right here, look at this little girl. And that looks like a legit lightsaber. And if only they can be interactive with, like, the land, oh, I'd spend over 100 bucks for one. I mean, I'd probably spend two, depending on quality. But look at it, and notice he's got, like, a kyber crystal. Oh, no, 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 go back, go back. That canister, oh, my goodness. So if this is Savi, let's call him Savi. That canister that's in his hand, if you remember Rogue One, the, when they're going Kaiba Kaiba, when they're on Jeddah, getting the Kyber Crystals and the hover tank comes by, that canister is what keeps the Kyber Crystal. So this is this is huge. I don't know what language that is in the back, but I, I'm gonna have to look into that a little further. Uh, but notice we do see a purple lightsaber. We see a blue lightsaber. We see a lightsaber here on display, right in front of Avi, we'll call him Avi and a bunch of pieces on a tray. God, this is the most exciting part for me and we've only gotten to the second shop. All right, next up. Uh, oh, look at that. That's actually a, a full-size TIE Fighter. Oh my goodness. Disney Imagineers view a full life-size TIE Fighter as they work on a Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. That looks amazing. All right, throughout Black Spire Outpost, uh, fans may see familiar faces, including Rey, Finn, Poe, BB-8, Chewbacca, and Kylo Ren. Now, previously, I had heard that that wasn't going to be the case, that you wouldn't see those characters. There wouldn't be a meet and greet or anything like that. But this changes everything. We're going to see all of those characters. Rey, Finn, Poe, BB-8, Chewie, and Kylo Ren. That's awesome. All right. Next, Black Spire Outpost was first mentioned on screen in Solo, A Star Wars Story. That's true. They did mention Black Spire. Uh, throughout Black Spire Outpost, fans may see familiar. Okay, we saw that part, and I think we're I think we're back to the beginning. Yes, we are. Okay, let's move on to the next section. The second, no, we're going on that. Let's take a look at some of the cast member outfits that were just premiered last night. Now it says Disney cast members in costume from the Resistance left and the First Order on the right will interact with guests in Star Wars: Rise of the Resistance. So all of these cast members will interact with us. I like what I'm seeing there. That looks really, I mean, that's very Star Wars. You can't go wrong with that kind of like vest and little, the little thing there, kind of like I've got on mine. Um, that's, that's perfect. In the first order, the hats are right on. That looks good. I just hope that the cast members are as good at actors that, that, you know, the first order ones are going to be very stern, maybe with a British accent, but they'll be very stern and direct with the, you know, all the, all of us guests. And the resistance will be a little bit more like laid back or like in a hurry or stressed out. Like there's, there's a lot of potential here. Uh, cast members in villager costumes pictured will interact with guests throughout Batu, And he looks pretty plain, but I think that's, that's cool. But again, I hope these cast members are really, really trained to act the part. Uh, here's another villager. Very nice. Very nice. That, that one's kind of whatever. 
That one could just be like a normal person. You got the lines here from the little tunic she's wearing that definitely make it Star Wars, but that's almost like too regular. Plus, that's going to be a little hot to wear in the summer, I think, especially in Florida. Oh, that's way too hot to wear in Florida. Let's just kind of go back and see last lady. That was the same lady. And here she is wearing a full, almost indoor outfit. It looks almost like an indoor, like, polo or poncho, whatever, poncho. Hmm. Okay, so we're back to that picture. So already the outfits look good. The outfits look really good. <gasps> here we go. Okay. Fuel up with out of this world fare. If you're like C-3PO who thinks space travel sounds rather perilous, or if you simply want to unwind after a daring day of wandering through Black Spire Outpost, look no further than Olga's Cantina, where even the blaster bolt scorches on the walls tell a story. Run by an int intriguing alien proprietor, Olga Gara, this watering hole invites guests to share their tales from around the galaxy as they enjoy exotic beverages served in unique vessels. Potations with alcohol include Bespin Fizz, Bloody Rancor, Dagobah Slug Slinger, Fuzzy Tauntaun, Jedi Mind Trick, Jet Juice, Outer Rim, Spriran Calf, T-16 Skyhopper, and Yub Nub. Non-alcoholic libations include Black Spire Brew, Blue Bantha, Carbon Freeze, Cliff Dweller, Hyper Punch, Hyper Drive Punch It, Jabba Juice, Mugen Tea, and Terrine Tea. And provisions include a Cantina Mix. Okay. Keep your spaceships parked as all beverages in Oga's Cantina will be same on both coasts. So in both Disney World and Disneyland will have the same list of drinks. Uh, it says you'll find Oga lurking in the shadows and locals know better than to dare cross the proprietor. DJ R3X, formerly known as Captain Rex. This guy, this guy. Um, the Star Speeder 3000 pilot from Star Tours now calls Olga's Cantina's home where he's in charge of providing the musical entertainment. Feeling hungrier than a Leviathan, head over to Do Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo, a multi-purpose transport shuttle dock atop a large hangar for traveling food shows. That's where Chef Strono, Cookie Tugs, has converted his modified Sinar Chal Utilipi transport into a popular mobile kitchen. So it's like a food truck, a space food truck. This is awesome. Uh, his travels across the galaxy allow him to fill his pantry with exotic ingredients. He's proud to present Tug's Grub, a traveling diner for diners traveling. Inspired by dishes he created during his time working for Mas Kanata on Taco Donna. That's awesome. Okay, so this is, I don't know, I can't click this photo, but I know we're going to come back to this photo in a little bit, and it's going to explain what all that is. All right, non-alcoholic beverages include the Fatro and Moof Juice. Yeah, Moof Milker, I love it. Well, entrees include braised shock roast, featuring beef pot roast with cavatelli pasta, kale and mushrooms, the fried and Dorian tip yip, a decadent chicken dish with roasted vegetable mash and herb gravy, nice, the Felucian garden spread, it's gonna be a salad, a plant-based kefta meatball. Okay, so it's a meatball, like meat mock meatball, not really meat. A uh, dish with herb hummus, and tomato cucumber relish with a pita bread. That sounds really good. And the Athorian Garden Loaf, a plant-based meatloaf dish served with roasted vegetable mash, seasonal vegetables, and mushroom sauce. The smoked kadu ribs featuring smoked country sticky porky ribs, blueberry corn muffin, cabbage slaw, oven roasted burra fish featuring Dijon crusted sustainable fish with mixed greens. Oh my God, this is just gonna keep going. This is the whole menu. Uh, roasted vegetables, quinoa, so we've got fish, we've got pork, so there's pumpkin season there. Um, oh, the oven roasted tip yip is a rotis roasted chicken with mixed greens, roasted vegetables, and quinoa. So we have ribs, we have pork ribs, we have a meatloaf type dish. They've got it all covered for everybody, meat eaters, vegetarians. I just want to get this going quick. What else we got? Green curry, ranch dressing, yob shrimp, noodle salad, marinated noodle salad with chilled shrimp. That sounds good. Seafood lovers, there you go. Um, dessert options include raspberry cream puff with passion fruit mousse, chocolate cake, and white chocolate mousse, coffee custard. So you just got desserts. Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo has two children's menu options. So fried chicken with mac and cheese and chilled shrimp with vegetables and rice noodle salad with a sweet orange dressing. That actually sounds pretty good. That does sound pretty good. I don't know how many kids are into shrimp, but like my kids are. My kids love shrimp. So... Yeah, that's an interesting choice, but I like it. Meanwhile, Ronto's Roaster's large pod racing engine will be firing up a barbecue pit for mouth-watering sandwiches. When customers line up to order, they'll encounter a former smelter droid 
carefully turning the spit of the meats. That's awesome. And complaining about his job. Ah, I love it. That's really cool. Items include the Meluron juice. Nice. Meluron is a Star Wars Rebels reference. Uh, the Turkey Jerky, which is not Star Wars at all. That's an interesting name. And the, I guess this is less confusing. And the Ronto Wrap, filled with spiced grilled sausage and roasted pork. That sounds really good. Uh, guests will also be able to choose from a variety of exotic non-alcoholic drinks, like the Sour Sarlacc and the Tatooine Sunset. Very cool. Now, about the alcoholic drinks, those are going to be, when you order them at Uga's Cantina, you have to enjoy them there. You can't walk around the rest of Galaxy's Edge with alcohol. That's just one of the rules they've set out. I don't know if they mention it here, but it has been mentioned elsewhere. All right. What do we got here? Elsewhere in the bustling market, the milk stand. There's a milk. There's a third official place. Uh, milk. There's maybe more than that. Fourth official place. Because Ronto Roasters was another one. Uh, milk stand will offer two local favorites. Blue milk, first seen in Star Wars A New Hope. Green milk, introduced in The Last Jedi from the Thala Sirens. That's cool. Four years ago, the team visited Lucasfilm to get ideas for the ingredients. According to Michel Gondreau, food and beverage director, Disneyland Resort, Brian Cozio, food and beverage concept development director at the Walt Disney Resort, and Brian Piasecki, culinary director, concept development at Walt Disney Resort, Lucasfilm's response, you get to write the story. After brainstorming what a bantha might consume in order to produce its blue milk, for example, they landed on a plant-based dairy drink allowing more guests to drink it. So it's not like just milk with blue food coloring. It's, they thought this through. Other vendors in the area will highlight local delicacies, like the colorful Outpost Mix, which is a popcorn snack, combining savory spicy, sweet flavors, available to try at Kat Saka's Kettle. So it's a little food stand, a little popcorn stand. I like it. Check out all the food drink options coming to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Let's go through these pictures. Let's do it. All right, so this is non-alcoholic beverages. On the left is Fatro. On the right is Moof Juice. Orange. Interesting. Next up, non-alcoholic drinks. Carbon Freeze is on the left. That would be this guy with the little boba orbs inside. Uh, Cantina Mix is in the middle. That's an interesting look. It's very shallow looking, but it, you can never tell by the photo. Plus, what are those crispy things? And the Cliff Dweller on the right can be found at Ogus. Now, those are all non-alcoholic. They look good. They look really good. I bet kids, adults, everyone's going to love those. Next, ooh, we have alcoholic beverages, my favorite, <laughs> from left to right. Uh, let's see here. The Outer Rim, which looks like, is that mustard? What is that? It looks like it's mustard or something on the side. I don't know what's up with that. It's probably something delicious and sweet. Uh, it's called the Outer Rim because it has something on the outer rim of the glass. Haha, <laughs> see what you did there. Uh, we've got the Bespin Fizz. Nice. It's very simple. The Yub Nub, nice and orange, and the Fuzzy Tauntaun, which is yellow for some reason. I figured it'd be bluish. I don't know, because Tauntauns are like gray. Uh, yellow, though. Interesting. And I like the foam on top. Um, next up, blue milk is in the foreground, and green milk is in the background. Now, that green milk doesn't look quite like what Link, or what Luke, Link, blue milk, my words, uh, what Luke was drinking on The Last Jedi. That was a little bit more like goo, like gel, like clear... So, it's interesting. I'm definitely going to have to try it. Uh, next up, the Braised Shock Roast. This is what we're talking about. Found at Docking Bay 7. It's pot roast with pasta and mushrooms. Ogus Cantina. So, these are delicious drinks. It's more like a dessert drink, I think. I believe these are non-alcoholic for the most part. So, from left to right, Mugan Tea, which is alcoholic. So, I'm guessing it's going to be like a Long Island iced tea. Looks like with blueberries and lime skewer thing. Uh, the Blue Bantha. Oh, maybe those don't contain alcohol at all. Because the next one, the Bloody Rancor with the bone on top, that one does contain alcohol. And the last one is the Black Spire Brew, which looks almost like a coffee kind of drink. Very interesting. All right. Guests can indulge in a raspberry cream puff with passion fruit mousse. I believe that's on the left. Or chocolate cake with white chocolate mousse and coffee custard at the right at the docking bay seven so docking bay seven is going to be the spot to eat uh fried and dorian tip yip found at docking bay seven so look like a nice fried piece of chicken yeah decadent chicken dish with roasted vegetable mash and herb gravy i like the green color of that gravy that's intense um for, ooh, this looks good i hadn't seen this yet Pollution Garden Spread found at Docking Bay 7. This is the plant-based Kefta Meatball. So this is almost like a, um, 
like a falafel wrap, almost. Like, you know, it's, you get pita bread, right? Yeah, so it's like herb hummus, tomato cucumber relish, pita bread, and like a little fake meatball thing. That I'm going to be all over that. Sounds good. Uh, the Athorian Garden Loaf found at Docking Bay 7. Food and Cargo is a plant-based meatloaf dish served with roasted vegetable mash, seasonal vegetables, and mushroom sauce. That looks really good. Now, this is a plant-based meatloaf, so it's not, it's fully vegetarian. That's, that's pretty rad. That looks delicious, too. Plus, I love those green beans. Those are, like, my favorite kind of green beans. It says seasonable vegetables, so who knows? Might be different all the time. But I also see those fancy carrots, too. Hmm. Next up, smoke kadu ribs. Now, the kadu from episode one, uh, there were little things that they, the Gungans rode underwater. Uh, found in Docking Bay 7, food and cargo features smoky country sticky pork ribs with blueberry corn muffin and cabbage slaw. Now, look at that pork rib. It's like crusted in some kind of panko or something. Some kind of breading is like drizzled on the top outside of the sauce. Hmm. The muffin looks good. And you know, the slaw looks very plain. It looks like just probably cabbage and a vinaigrette, and that's about it. So, who knows? Might be delicious. There's the outpost mix. This is the popcorn. This is the savory, spicy, and sweet popcorn. That's going to be a go-to snack for everybody, for sure. Uh, Oven-roasted burra fish is at Docking Bay 7. That looks good. It looks like a salmon. Um, what does it say here? Features Dijon-crusted sustainable fish. Doesn't tell us what fish. With mixed greens, roasted vegetables, quinoa, pumpkin seeds, and a creamy green curry ranch dressing. That looks really good. The presentation on that looks nice. I yeah, there's nothing bad here so far. Everything everything they've mentioned, I want to eat, which is no surprise. But it looks good. Uh, next up, this is the tip yip at Docking Bay Seven. Features roasted chicken, mixed greens, roasted vegetables, quinoa, and pumpkin seeds. Okay, yeah, now that you know what's weird. This one has, I think they mixed pictures here because those are clearly pumpkin seeds. This would make more sense as a tip yip. Whereas this would be, I don't know. That is roasted chicken. Vegetables, I don't see quinoa anywhere in there and I don't see pumpkin seeds. So I'm, I'm a little confused. Not that I see, oh, not that I see them there either. But, oh, let's get to the next thing. We'll move on. Uh, this is the Meluron Juice, a bright reddish color. That's really cool. Turkey jerky in the middle there. Okay. Just straight up turkey jerky. And what are these taco hot dog things? This is the Bronto Wrap. Nice. Which is a wrap filled with spice grilled sausage and roasted pork at Ronto Roasters. Those look good. They look like little hot dog tacos, and that sounds delicious to me. Those look really good. I'm, I'm all about it. Uh, this is the Yob Shrimp Noodle Salad, Docking Bay 7. Marinated noodle salad with chilled shrimp. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Looks very Star Wars, though. Uh, next up, two more non-alcoholic beverages. This is the Fatro and the Mufju. Oh, we're back to the beginning. Cool. So we've seen all the foods. That looks awesome. Um, let's see here. Oh, a little blurb on the Droid Depot. Let's read about this. It says it's located in the market, inviting patrons to pick parts and pieces off a conveyor belt and build and customize their astromech droids, R-series or BB-series. Droids are capable of interacting with elements in the land, responding to guest behaviors. Additional programming chips and accessories can be added to the droids to further customize their ability. It's like Build-A-Bear, but for droids. Uh, Droid Depot will also offer guests pre-built droids, including C-3PO, who has quite a bit to say, like always. Especially if you accidentally take off his head and put it on backwards. That's cool. Uh, there's a Rex who will happily play whatever music you have on your smartphone through a Bluetooth connection. That's really cool. Uh, the shop also offers droid-inspired products and much more. And intergalactic tourists needn't fret as all merchandise will be labeled in dollars. All right, this is a little blurb about Savi's workshop, the lightsaber one. This is the one I'm the most excited for. Guests are given the opportunity to draw upon the force as they build their own elegant lightsaber. At the heart of every saber is a kyber crystal. And during a guided tour, each guest will have four options to choose from. Peace, justice, modeled after Jedi from the Republic area. Power control, a nod to the Sith. Elemental nature, harnessing air, earth, fire, and water. And defense, shrouded in mystery. 
Will you embrace the light side of the Force like Luke Skywalker or the dark side of the Force? That sounds amazing. Guys, that's, this sounds... This is what I want from Galaxy's Edge. <sighs> Man. All right, next up says, Inside Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. Visitors will find a selection of mysterious and rare items for sale, okay, representing different eras of Star Wars Galaxy, including ancient Jedi and Sith artifacts, holocrons, lightsabers, and more. As they explore the nooks and crannies, they will find Doc at his desk, checking his inventory, taking calls, barking orders at assistants. That's got to be the animatronic. I wonder if he's going to do it in English or Galactic Basic or in the Thorian language, which whatever that is. Uh, guests who venture to the creature stall will find some fascinating, unusual beasts from all across the galaxy, ranging from the friendly Porgs and Tauntauns to the not-so-friendly Wrath Tars and Wampas. Nearby, you'll find the Toydarian Toymaker stall, offering items crafted by its namesake alien Toydarians. First seen buzzing around Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars Phantom Menace. It peddles artisan-style plush characters, wooden tin toy instruments. So they're, they're going to be mass-produced toys, right? They're going to be plushies. They're going to be a billion plushies because it's Disney. But they're going to feel like they were handmade. And they might even have been handmade, probably by some poor kid's hands. Let's not go there. But they're going to, everything's going to have a very handmade, not plastic. It's going to be metal, very specific fabrics. Not like something you could buy at any store, but something you would find on a distant planet in a galaxy far, far away. And I love it. Um, let's oh look at that picture. That's a gorgeous picture. This is the stuff that's gonna be at Doc Ondar's. That's like a Sith holocron. There's a Sith kyber crystal, a Sith book, weird urn thing, statues of like old. Oh my goodness! And that Darth Maul bust. All right. Resistance Supply is a makeshift resource location at the Resistance Hidden Command Post, selling badges, hats, pins, and other. I need more badges. I hope they mean patches. Because I need more patches. Uh, and other accessories to help guests feel like they're part of the cause. On the flip side, First Order Cargo is a temporary storage dock located near the market. Easily identified by a never-before-seen First Order tie Echelon. Interesting, interesting. A new tie. Ah, oh, it's so cool. It gives interstellar tourists a chance to pledge their loyalty to the First Order by purchasing caps, gear, model ships, pins, and more. You can buy your own First Order hat. That's cool. Uh, this is the place they touch down. Oh, oh I see pictures. I said, I'm going I'm to hold on. Uh, this is the place they touch down, Brad Schoenberg, director of merchandise, says. Um, they're trying to win the hearts and minds of locals with propaganda and merch. So it's like a battle going throughout the land. There's a resistance side, and then there's where the First Order landed. And, oh, okay, this is cool. Uh, one thing you won't find, evergreen Star Wars products. Everything was created specifically for Galaxy's Edge, or as Brad puts it, we're giving today's consumers an experience only we can deliver. Items reflect the stories of yore, and they've been told throughout Black Spire Outpost. With a vast array of innovative goods, he adds, there are many levels of discovery. This is awesome. Okay, let's look at the pictures of all the merch. Let's do it. Black Spire Outfitters, guests will be able to mix and match clothing to create their own galactic style. This, I'm, I'm gonna have to like, Make my own Jedi robe. Now, what do you guys think this costs? That that's got to be over a hundred bucks each. I'm guessing almost two hundred for that one for the for the male for the adult. That's got to be like two hundred bucks for the full tunic. Maybe even three fifty four hundred. Probably like four. I'm, the more I'm thinking about it, this is I'm not. I need another job. Click on those ads, guys. This is gonna be so expensive. And look, that kid's got a lightsaber. So does she. They all have lightsabers. Oh my good. Ooh, 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 ooh. Is this a spoiler? See this lightsaber right here? That looks that looks a lot like Ray's staff. Like part of Ray's staff. This one not so much. That one looks a lot like Ray's staff. Okay. Hey, oh, she's got Kylo the mom over here has Kylo Ren. Alright, it's just a promo pick. There's no nothing to be taken from that, right? Right? Uh, oh that looks it just looks so cool. Look at the, the dark, dark Jedi robes. And you can mix and match. All right. <gasps> Guests will find rare, unique items at Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities, including the picture Jedi artifacts. Oh, look at that book. Oh, it's the Jedi book from Last Jedi. Uh, and look at the elements. Water, wind, earth, fire, I'm guessing. 
that is and that ties in with the Jedi crystals oh man oh man Galaxy's Edge is gonna be nuts look so we got Yoda Mace who's that Sassy Tin Plo Koon right did I get those right I think I got those right there's like a Jedi mug this cool wall placard thing some statues of old Jedi oh my goodness Oh, here's the toy, the Toy Darian toy. So remember what I was saying? They're supposed to look like they're handcrafted. That is, that's this. Look at them. They look like, there's a little Porg, little Chewbacca, Poe, or Finn. There's no Poe. But this is the big thing to take away here. See this little Porg? He's like a little wooden Porg. See this little box? It's like a little tin box. This little thing. I think that's a musical instrument because here's a drum. And there's a little beater. So it's like an Ewok style drum. But get this, see this flute right here? This flute, that's what Figure and Deanne and the modal nodes were playing, those kind of flutes. And there's another one here on this side of the picture. Oh my goodness, Toy Dairy and Toy Maker style, an assortment of artisan style plush characters, wooden tin toys, and musical instruments. We're gonna be able to buy those flutes. Now I wonder, are they gonna be plastic? Are they gonna be metal? And how much? I'm, ah, oh man, just look at that. We're going to be able to have that flute from two of them, two different flutes. This is, this is cool. Oh my goodness, those look really good. The creature stall, this is the one we mentioned earlier, will offer creatures of the galaxy, including porks, tauntauns, and more. I see a Rathtar, which I did read in an article on uh, OC Register that I think if you pick up the Rathtar, like shake it or squeeze it, it'll start to like vibrate. So these toys are gonna have like unique functions. These creatures are each gonna have some kind of electronics in them and some unique functions. I think, I don't know which one I would get for, I already have Porgs. I have plenty of Wrath Tars for my action figures. That looks like the Toad character that was outside of Jabba's Palace. That's really cool. This little guy looks like he was on Canto Bite or something. I can't really place where this little orange guy is from. I think it's from Canto Bite. You guys let me know down below if you know where he's from. Uh, of course, we have the Wampa from Empire Strikes Back, as well as the Tauntaun. I, personally, I might buy the Tauntaun. You might see me walking around Black Spire, holding my Tauntaun in one hand, a droid in the other, and a little yip-tip in the mouth, just from the, the oh my goodness, yub-nubs and everything, and this is, this is too much. This is overload. Hmm. At Sabi's workshop, hand-built lightsabers. Each build will begin with a personal connection to a kyber crystal used to ignite the custom lightsaber. Oh my God. Guys, this is massive. Stop by the Droid Depot, build your own R-Series, BB-Series droids. Those look very plasticky, but they do look cool. I see the BB-8, I see the R2, I see the Rex. That's probably the Rex that plays music. And they'll interact with their surroundings throughout Black Spire Outpost. Guys, this is, this is so much. Oh, what is this? At the Droid Depot, guests can choose from an assortment of droids, apparel, and other droid-inspired products. Uh, it looks to me like that's what the workers might wear, or is that just something I could buy to wear myself? Maybe that's something I could buy to wear myself. I don't know for sure. That's the box the Astromech units come in. No, this is a customer. This is a, a guest. This is what guests will wear. That's, that's crazy, and it's really cool. Oh my goodness, here's the first order stuff. You can buy first order outfits. You'll be able to choose among the gear and supplies that the 709th Legion brought to them with the first order of their car. Oh my goodness, this is, I can't. <gasps> At Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities, guests will find holocrons. You can buy holocrons. Oh, you can be able to buy Jedi and Sith holocrons. You think those crystals have anything to do with it? I see crystal. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Those crystals have to have something to do with it. And last, I think we saw this earlier, we scrolled past it. All the Sith stuff you can find at Doc Ondar's. Oh, this is Black Spire Outpost. Guests can join the resistance, oh, this is the last picture, by purchasing gear, badges, and more. So look at those shirts. They're cut like Rey's clothing on the women's side, and that's a very Star Wars jacket this guy's got on. Even little, again, like I mentioned earlier, one of these. Oh man, this is huge. This is huge. This is gonna be the biggest thing ever. Guys, this has been a long video. There's so much going on. What's your favorite part about this Galaxy's Edge stuff? You wanna see me report more on new Galaxy's Edge news as it comes out? Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. 
I love you guys. Thank you so much for making it this far. I, I have to process all of this. So until next time, may the Force have with you. Goodbye forever. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, especially those of you who make it to the very, very end of the video. I love you guys the most. Just saying, you guys are special, extra special. And if you like this kind of video where I just talk about toy news, let me know. Leave this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below with what you're excited about. And maybe I'll do more of these in the future. Either way, thank you guys so much. See you later. May the force have with you. Have you. Bye. Bye.